a mystery cell phone containing evidence of brutal murders, a tale of lost love and chance reunions, and a strange plague straight from the pages of a medieval fairy tale. Are these far-fetched stories taken straight from the history books, or are they simply stories from the depths of our writers' minds? It's time to test your ability to decipher between fact or fiction. The line that divides the factual from the unreal has long since blurred. The tales we once thought fantastical now implanted as truth. To decipher verity from the imagined, you must break from the ordinary and consider a universe where the outlandish prevails. Can you expand your mind to see beyond our perceived reality? Can you decide what's fact or fiction? It sounds like the plot from a horror movie. A young female backpacker found a cell phone that contained evidence of a series of brutal murders. Or did she? When 18-year-old Hannah Sheldon left her home in rural England to pursue her dream of traveling the world, little did she know that one of her first stops would have the potential to put her off leaving the safety of her own home ever again. After finishing her A-level exams in the summer of 2017, Hannah and her friends wanted to blow off some steam. So they did what many graduates do and planned a once-in-a-lifetime around-the-world backpacking trip. Their route would take in Asian adventures, Central American beaches, and the ultimate backpacker lifestyle of Australia. Their first stop was Bangkok, Thailand, and Hannah and her two best friends couldn't wait to start their adventure. Their first month in Thailand and Cambodia were perfect, and the girls were tanned, happy, and relaxed. Their next stop was Vietnam, and as they hopped in a taxi from the airport in Hanoi, there was a palpable air of excitement. En route to their hostel, Hannah noticed a cell phone in the back of the car that didn't belong to their group. They tried to tell the taxi driver, but he didn't understand English, so the girls decided to take the phone to try and work out who it belonged to. Once they checked into the hostel, they headed to the bar, and while the other girls went to socialize, Hannah began looking through the phone for evidence of the owner. There was nothing on it, though, other than one six-minute video. Hannah started watching, and it took a second for her to realize that she was witnessing the murders of four men. The men were middle-aged and wearing stained and torn clothing. They were in a parking lot on their knees with their hands up in surrender, pleading with whoever was behind the camera. Suddenly, someone out of sight shouted something and gunfire erupted. The men fell one by one to the ground. The video focused on the lifeless bodies for a full minute before shutting off. Hannah's friends found her still clutching the phone, weeping gently over what she just witnessed. Could you imagine finding a random phone that contains video of a brutal murder? Does it seem a little far-fetched that a murderer would be so careless to leave behind such evidence or to film the act to begin with? Then again, we do live in a bizarre world where technology is everywhere. Let us know what you think right now in the comments section below and by voting using the on-screen poll while we prepare for our second story for tonight. Next up is a tale that proves just how long true love can last and how it's never too late for a second chance. Sixty long years had passed since Kia Pavov last saw Albert. He was the love of her life, and the three days that they spent together after their wedding were the happiest of her life. But then, sadly, she was forced to kiss him goodbye and send him off to rejoin his Red Army unit. Kia waited patiently for him, but one day, without warning, the entire Pavov family was branded enemies of the state and was internally exiled by Stalin's regime. They had no forwarding address to leave and no opportunity to return. It was hopeless, and the young couple thought that they had lost one another forever. 
When Albert finally had a chance to visit his village on a break from army duty, he found the Kia was gone. He was devastated and did everything that he could to find his bride, but came up empty-handed. The young couple was devastated by their separation, but they both eventually remarried because of intense pressure from their families. They never forgot about each other, though, and each of them thought of the other on a daily basis, despite being married to other people. Little did they know that their wish one day would come true. Sixty long years after the couple was torn apart, they both happened to be visiting their old town on the same day. Kia was standing outside their old house where the couple had lived for three days after their wedding. Then, suddenly, Albert drove up and got out of his car. They locked eyes, and despite how much time had passed, they still recognized one another immediately. Their first embrace was an emotional one, and they stayed up all night talking, only to discover that they were both recently widowed. Not long after, they would remarry, and to this day, they're living happily ever after by each other's side. This beautiful story restores faith in the purity of true love, and it proves that you should never give up hope. But does that mean it really happened? The world's a big place, so what are the odds that they happen to visit the same location on the same exact day 60 years later? Let us know what you think in the comments section and by using our on-screen poll while we get ready for our third and final tale of tonight. Plagues have killed millions over the course of history, and almost every nation on Earth has been affected at some point. But Germany experienced a plague like no other, a techno-plague. In 1998, 32,000 gathered in a field in Hamburg for a techno festival. DJs flew in from all over the world to play for the crowd over the weekend, and it was one of the greatest parties that the city had ever seen. That is, until something weird happened that would land 212 people in the hospital. The weekend started out normally. On a Friday morning, excited revelers pitched their tents and sat in the sunshine drinking beer and chatting with friends. The DJs were set to start that afternoon, and the campsite was buzzing with excitement. As the sun set on the first day, the field was alive with the sound of bass and the sight of thousands of people moving with the music. Saturday started off the same way, with more sunshine, more music, and more dancing. The day went well, and as the headline act finished his set at midnight, most people began to walk back to the campsite to continue the party there but not everyone left. Around 400 people stayed, and they continued to dance without any music. At first, organizers thought that alcohol or drugs might be to blame, so they tried to move the group along, but it was as if they were all in a trance. They continued to dance with blank looks on their faces, their eyes hollow and glassy. Organizers became worried after an hour or so, and to be safe, they called for medical assistance. Nobody, though, could stop the group from dancing. As the sun rose on Sunday, they were still moving, almost like zombies. Full of worry for the revelers, organizers canceled the final day of the festival to focus on solving the dancing plague which had fallen upon their event. Police came, as well as more medical personnel, but still, nobody could stop them. It was three days before the dancers began to collapse from exhaustion and dehydration, and seven people suffered strokes and heart attacks. Over half of the dancers needed hospital treatment, and to this day, nobody could figure out what happened at that techno party in Germany 20 years ago. Germany is renowned for its love of techno, but did that love go too far and almost result in the deaths of several partygoers? Was it a bad batch of drugs, or perhaps an untraceable bug that was to blame? Or did we concoct this tale simply to throw you in a loop? Once again, let us know what you think in the comments section right now, and vote by using the on-screen poll. Now let's get ready for the moment we've all been waiting for, the reveal. Are you ready to find out if you can decipher between fact or fiction? 
let's look back at tonight's three stories and find out which were born from reality and which were fabrications of the imagination. First, we're going back to Vietnam and the murder video on a mysterious cell phone. Did Hannah inadvertently find evidence of a murder on her trip of a lifetime? Or is this story lifted straight from the pages of a horror novel? We're happy to report that this story is, in fact, fiction. Next, we're back in Soviet Russia for the love story of a lifetime. Was Kia and Albert's love cut short only to reignite 60 years later? We're happy to report that yes, the couple did finally find each other in 2008. Anna and Boris are their real names, and they said that in an interview they never quarreled since they've been reunited, because time is too precious to waste on silly fights. Finally, we're descending on the field in Hamburg, where 400 people were overcome with an unstoppable urge to dance. Did this event really happen? Well, actually, no it didn't. There was no techno party, and no revelers were hospitalized due to their unstoppable dancing. Though we did draw inspirations from true events. In 1518 in Strasbourg, more than 400 people were found dancing for over a month. Several people died of exhaustion, and historians still have no idea what caused the event. How well did you do in tonight's video? Did you look past the deception of our world and define the off-blurred line that struggles to separate lies from the truth? Let us know in the comment section below. And should you find the urge to test your perceptions again, be sure to subscribe and join us next time when we ask you to decide what's fact or fiction.